Hunter, Hunter Hoffman, back with another insane video! In this video, I'll show you the few mods my M2 has, and what I think of the quality, looks, and fitment. Although I am a sucker for OEM, I have done a few mods to the M2 which I thought were necessary, and easily improved the car. So let's open up that hood, and let's get into it! So let's start with the most eye-catching feature under the hood, the cold air intake. I'm rocking a cold air intake by MST Performance. The first reason for purchasing this intake is the looks of it. I think this intake makes the engine bay a lot more appealing in comparison with having the stock air intake installed. I think the quality of the intake is pretty good. I like the finish of the intake tube and the heat shield, and the actual filter looks pretty good too. So the second reason for purchasing this intake is the sound that it produces. I like the blow of noise it makes when taking your foot off the gas, and the induction noise it makes when putting your foot on the gas. The small downside of the sound it produces, however, is that it also produces the induction noise when driving casually. Of course, great fun when you're pushing the car, but a little unwelcome when driving casually. Unfortunately, the fitment wasn't the greatest. The intake tube ever so slightly rubbed against the hood of the car, causing a bit of damage. After bending the bracket holding down the intake tube, that problem was resolved, but I wasn't amused. Also, the fitment of the heat shield is a bit off. MST Performance says the engine gains a couple of horsepower because of the intake, and that could well be, but I have no data to back that up. All in all, I'm happy with this mod. Alright, so now for the next mod. As most M2 owners know, the stock charge pipe is prone to cracking. Because of the heat cycles of the engine, the charge pipe expands and shrinks, and because it's made of very brittle plastic, it can therefore crack over time, leading up to boost leaks. It's therefore recommended to replace the stock charge pipe with an aftermarket one. I replaced mine with an aluminium FTP charge pipe. I like the looks and quality of it, and the fitment was good as well. The install, however, is a bit tricky, as there is very little room to wiggle it in. The charge pipe is also equipped with a bung for methanol injection. Although it flows slightly better, it's more of a safety precaution as, again, the stock charge pipe is prone to breaking. So then the boost pipe. Although the stock boost pipe is not known for failing, I replaced the stock boost pipe anyway knowing that the flow of the engine is as good as it can be. As you can see on the screen, I also bought the boost pipe from FTP Motorsport along with their charge pipe. The quality looks and fitment are the same as the charge pipe. The install, however, was quite hard, as it's buried all the way down in the engine bay. Another mod I installed to further improve the flow of the engine was a turbo inlet pipe, also made by MST Performance. In comparison with the stock turbo inlet pipe, which is again made of plastic and doesn't allow the turbo to properly breathe, the upgraded one looks much better and is of better quality. The fitment was very tight and it was pretty hard to install. I would recommend installing it along with the boost pipe, as they're on the same side of the engine. After installing it, a more noticeable turbo sound was present. Pretty cool. So the final upgrade under the hood is the intercooler. Another upgrade a lot of M2 owners do. This is because the stock intercooler really underperforms in the M2. The stock intercooler is too small and makes the car suffer from heat soaking when really pushing the car. I replaced mine with the CSF intercooler. It's an aluminum bar and plate intercooler. 
Although being a bit heavy, the quality and looks of the intercooler are great. The screws and washers that come with the kit, however, are extremely bad. I don't understand how CSF can make such a good intercooler and then supply it with very flimsy screws and way too small washers. It's also a shame that they still haven't addressed this issue over the years since the intercooler was introduced. Anyway, I did a video on the intercooler when I still had only like 70,000 subscribers, so go check that out if you're interested in that. Alright, so coming to the next mod of the car, it's the wheel studs and lug nuts. Originally the car comes with conventional wheel bolts, but I find it super handy to have wheel studs instead. I bought mine for motorsport hardware and initially was impressed by the looks and quality of them. But oh boy, look at this. For some reason these lug nuts are completely rusted and look, well, terrible. In all fairness, after contacting Motorsport Hardware, they were kind enough to send me a new set. To be clear, I never use power tools on these lug nuts and always use the correct socket. Still, I'll be putting a piece of paper in my socket to minimize the metal to metal contact and to hopefully prevent them from rusting. Let's see in a couple of months how they hold up. For now, they're looking fresh again. So another mod I did was replacing the stock brake lines. Although they were fine and I don't track the car, I still thought replacing them with steel braided brake lines by Goodrich couldn't hurt. Although I flushed the brake fluid when installing the steel braided brake lines, I do note an improvement in stopping power. The brakes bite a bit better. Although you don't generally see them, I think they look great and installing them was a breeze too. Alright, so moving on to the final mod of this video. It's the Honeycomb Reflector Delete by Asexon. They are quite pricey for just black panels of plastic, but compared to the stock red reflectors, I think they're a really nice touch. Alright, so those were all the mods so far. So far? Yes, so far, and here's a sneak preview of what's to come. So mysterious. Keep an eye out on the channel, and see you next time! Thanks for watching!